Making art is one thing and selling art is a whole other thing altogether, right? Over the last four years, I've tried numerous ways of marketing my art and some ways have been more successful than others. Um, I would love to share with you what has worked and what hasn't or what hasn't worked one way, but then ended up working another. I'm gonna cover 12 strategies. Most of these I have personally used uh, the other ones have been strategies that artist friends of mine have used with great success. So let's dive in. So the hardest thing when it comes to marketing and the thing that's most time consuming is just getting out there in the world and meeting people interested in the arts. And I know so many artists, including myself, are introverted. So this is a challenge, <laughs> but it's just something you've got to do and it gets easier with practice and who knows you might even end up enjoying yourself a little bit but uh you want to meet people interested in the arts so what does that mean it means going to gallery openings first fridays events those kind of things where you meet gallerists and you learn things from gallerists just talking to them and who knows over time they keep meeting you uh, they could take a look at your work and be genuinely interested to see it or refer you to another gallerist who could be a good fit for your work. If you're interested in gallery representation, that is. Uh, you meet other gallery goers. These are your potential collectors. You know, people, I hear this a lot from people who buy art. They say, oh, I love buying art from someone I know. You know, it makes them feel more connected to the work. Not always, but... You know, I've heard it more than once and uh, meeting you in person, hearing from you what your work is all about, why you make it, feeling your passion behind it, that helps people feel more connected to the art itself. Uh, and then you meet um, other artists and other artists are great to know because we understand the highs and lows that we're going through. We can offer mutual support and uh, give each other honest feedback. And, you know, sometimes I'll have someone ask me, oh, can you paint the horses? That's not really my area of expertise, but I know a couple of people who are fantastic equine artists. So I will refer this person to these other artists that I know, and they would do the same. They'll be like, here, I know this great artist who paints birds of prey. And it's just, it's symbiotic, it's great, and it helps you get used to talking about your work and why you make it, and then you gain confidence that way as well. So the second strategy is to connect with interior designers. I live in a major city, Dallas, so I went on Google and I typed in luxury interior design Dallas. And you could do this too, or go to the closest major city that you are willing to deliver and or ship your work. So I looked up Luxury Interior Design Dallas, and I must have sent over 500 emails to interior designers, introducing myself and sending them a link to my website. I let them know I was open to doing custom work and creating mock-ups. And I got a lot of work this way, which was awesome. Um, I feel like it was a great way to get my feet wet, to get in practice being a professional artist. And I see these as ongoing relationships. So in addition to connecting with galleries and selling work independently, I have interior designers that are interested in placing my work in the homes that they design. And now for everybody's favorite, posting on social media. I get it, trust me. Um, but it's, it's like getting out there and meeting people. It's, it's kind of one of those things that you have to do. And there's reasons for it, good reasons. Because if nobody knows you exist, they can't buy your artwork. And this is one great way to get exposure. Uh, being on Instagram and Facebook may not result in direct sales of your artwork. It does for some people I know, um, but most artists it doesn't. Uh, especially above a certain price point, but it's great for prints and merchandise, things that have a lower price point. It's also great for getting sort of general excitement around your work going. 
Uh, it gives you the chance to share more behind the scenes insight into your process, which helps you articulate your process better. Uh, it gives galleries the chance to discover you and see that you're a serious artist. And it gives collectors, people who you may have met in person or have bought something from you, it gives them the chance to place dibs on works in progress. Uh, if, if social media just really isn't your thing, at least get that digital real estate. Reserve the handle that's your name or your name fine art. And at the very least, just post your finished artwork. And, and then it can be, you know, an at-a-glance portfolio in your pocket. Uh, you can also, you know, separately create an album on your phone for the same purpose. So if you're somewhere that doesn't have a great internet connection and someone is asking you about your work, oh, what kind of work do you make? You can whip out your phone and just tap on the album that has the images of all your finished work. So speaking of digital real estate, have a website. This is basically your virtual gallery space. In a way, you are your own gallerist and you can make this whatever you want. Uh, you have to keep in mind that you are a brand. You and your work are a brand. And it's a good idea to make all of your printed and online material cohesive. By that I mean, maybe you don't want too many different kinds of fonts or too many different kinds of colors because you want the main focus to be your artwork. Uh, and there's tons of free, excellent resources out there that can give you guidance around branding and marketing. There's a there's an awesome podcast actually called I Love Marketing. And I'll, I'll add a link below so that you can start listening to it. And it gives good general marketing advice, but you can totally apply it to your art business. Uh, well, what else? A website, on your website, you should also have a store. A store is a great way to not only make sales, sales to people you have met and have not met, it's a great way to filter through scams. I mean, we all get those emails. My wife and I are having an anniversary and I need you to send me a piece of artwork urgently. Like if you have a store, it's instantly obvious. It's a scam because they could easily just go to your store and buy something. <laughs> Um, so you know if it's a genuine inquiry or not right away. Uh, if you have trusted services like PayPal and secure credit card processing, it also makes people who you've never met know that you're not a scam. <laughs> they feel comfortable buying work from you. Uh, and if you have a photograph of yourself, of yourself smiling, working, on your website, that also makes you seem more trustworthy. Uh, and it shows that you are willing to stand beside or behind your work. So have a website, have a store, make it cohesive, make it friendly, make it trustworthy. Okay, now that you've got your website up and running, it's now time for you to improve the SEO of your website. SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. and it's, it's that idea, you know, if nobody knows you exist, they can't buy art from you. Like if your website doesn't rank in search results, nobody's gonna find it. And that's what SEO does, is it helps your website actually rank highly in search results. There's a lot of tools that are out there for free. Uh, if you go on the webmaster tools for Bing and Google, I will add links below, but go on their webmaster tools and simply register your website, that helps. And then using the webmaster tools, you also index all the various pages of your website. That helps too. I will add a link below to Google's free SEO guidelines. They tell you point blank things you can do to help your website rank more highly, which is great. Now this takes time. And if it's in your budget, totally hire somebody to take care of this for you. I actually have a good friend who does this for a living and he's great at it. Shout out to Victor of Thomas Digital. I will add a link below to his website 
So if it's in your budget, you can work with somebody like him. All right, we are on strategy number six, and that is to send out email newsletters. Uh, as of 2023, MailChimp allows you to have up to 500 contacts for free. And this is what I use. Uh, and it's, it's a great way to keep people in the loop around your work and let them know what pieces are available for sale. Uh, I've seen many marketing experts suggest to people to send out a newsletter once a week, once every two weeks. To me, this feels excessive and impractical. I don't know any artists that are producing enough work to send out a newsletter every week or two. And also, we all get so many emails. And I mean, if I was getting an email every week or two from someone, I would be kind of annoyed. <laughs> I, think it, I think sending out a newsletter every quarter is great or even twice a year is great. I mean, that's what I do and it seems to work well. I like to send one in uh, November, November, even December, basically any, we're between November 15th and December 15th. Cause that's when people are, are buying gifts. You know, it's the holiday season. That seems to be pretty effective. I also divide my contacts into two groups and I, alter my message slightly. Um, I send one to art collectors and I send one to interior designers and gallerists, other people in the trade basically. So that's something to keep in mind also, just like your website and the way you present yourself on social media, you're thinking about your brand. So you want it all to be cohesive and you want the content of your newsletter to focus on the work and the work to be what stands out. Keep your messages short and sweet and the focus on the work. <laughs> Another way that you can reach people is by sending out physical postcards. So when you're mindlessly scrolling through your phone, which we all do, <laughs> take a few minutes every day to, to go on Zillow and, and set the filter to recently sold homes over $2 million in your area, if you live in a major city or, you know, the closest major city. And take these addresses and put them in a spreadsheet. And over time, you'll accumulate hundreds, if not thousands of addresses. Um, and, you know, people in recently purchased homes are probably looking for art. That's why I say look at recently sold homes. <laughs> uh, so this is a great audience to send out postcards to. So you take this list, once you have at least 200, which is the minimum amount, you need to get reduced postage rates from USPS, and you go to Vistaprint, and you use their postcard mailing service, which will allow you to create and have a postcard sent directly to these recipients. Uh, the cool thing about Vistaprint service is that you can actually select the day of the week that these are delivered. And what I do is I send them on the furthest day away from when junk mail <laughs> gets mailed or junk mail gets delivered. So I think in Dallas, it's, I can't remember if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, but you always get junk mail the same day every week. And you don't want your postcard to, to be delivered with the junk mail. You don't want to take it mixed in with the junk mail. So pick like three days away from your city's junk mail day. That way people will actually get it and take a look at it. Um, but this is a wonderful way to reach people that you might not cross paths with in person. Another way to market yourself is with magazine ads. And this can get really expensive, especially when you consider the rule of seven. That's like how the average number of times that someone needs to be exposed to something to take action. So like in your case, uh, signing up for newsletter or making a purchase, that's the average number of times. <laughs> that is if someone is gonna take action at all. Um, so buying magazine ad space can really add up, but it can be really effective, especially if you choose magazines that are dedicated towards the kind of art that you create 
um, and they have reasonable followings. So do some research on magazines, see what kind of followings they have, both with the print magazines that get sent out and on social media and ask them, you know, what's include in their, included in their advertising packages. Is it just print or is it social media posts? Like what size, is it a quarter page, half page, full page? Um, and maybe try it once, pick the most relevant month or edition for what you create. Like if you're a watercolor artist, for example, and a magazine features watercolor paintings one month, advertise in that month um, and just see what happens. Uh, you might have more luck with the postcards, but sometimes it's, it's worth it to try a couple of different things and see what works best for you. All right, next strategy, sell more than just originals. So prints, merchandise, personally, I like Fine Art America because somebody can go on and choose for themselves. Uh, do they want a print on paper, metal, acrylic? Uh, do they want a frame? What size do they want it? They can choose and they can customize it exactly how they want it. Uh, and, and I don't have to deal with any of that. It's basically entirely outsourced and it's just passive income for me. Uh, so I'll, I'll put a link below so you can check that out and maybe create a profile and start uploading images of your own work. Um, if you are very particular and you only want the highest quality G clays or like lithograph prints, then look for a local printer who offers that service. Uh, whatever you do or don't do print wise, make sure you are at least getting high quality images of your artwork taken for your portfolio and for down the road. You never know when you might need them. Okay, we're on strategy number 10, and that is to exhibit at art fairs. Now, I did this once and it was like a spectacular failure. <laughs> and my mistake was I picked a festival where art was a side attraction. So if you do this, only go to fairs and festivals where art is the main attraction and people are there to buy art. Uh, so that was a mistake that I made. Uh, I don't think at this point my art is the best fit for art fairs because a lot of my wildlife work uh, is on the more expensive side, it's on the larger side, so it's, it's harder for people to transport and take home and it's a kind of a big on-the-spot purchase. But I have some friends that do extremely well when they go to art fairs. One example is my friend Robin Taylor Cook. She makes bright, cheerful, abstract floral paintings and they're, they're like this big. So they're super easy to just take home and put on the wall. Um, and they're not, the price point is, is reasonably affordable and she is friendly. <laughs> so she's got a, a light, bright palette. She's got small, relatively affordable work and the subject matter has got mass appeal. She does great. Um, someone who's probably gonna face more challenges selling work at art fairs would be someone who with a darker color palette, with more niche subject matter, and who has larger and or more expensive pieces that are harder to transport. Um, so think about those things if you're thinking about whether or not art fairs are something you wanna do, because that's a big investment. Um, and maybe to take a look at the experiences or talk to other artists who have done it and see what's worked for them and what hasn't worked for them. Entering art contests, juried exhibitions, and group exhibitions are another way to get credibility and exposure for your work. So CAFE, Call for Art Entries, is like the central hub for finding uh, residencies, contests, exhibitions, both locally and internationally. So I'll put a link below to check that out. Um, it's a great place and it's super easy to filter through the listings so you can find something that's relevant to you. Finally, the last strategy I wanna talk about today is teaching. So this could be teaching online, using platforms like Skillshare or YouTube, or it could be teaching in person. More than one artist has told me that they were teaching a class and someone bought a painting from them. So it is a way to sell more art directly, 
uh, but it's a way to make income on the side, uh, get new fans, and articulate your process. And if you've ever taught a class, you know that you always learn something from your students too. So there's always like this mutual exchange happening. Uh, but some people have definitely made careers out of teaching. They put out quality content and amass large followings, and that's just what their practice turns into, and they're really passionate about it. But there's many ways to teach that can help you reach your goals. All right, those are my 12 strategies. I really hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask below. Also, if you've done something that's worked well that I didn't mention, also comment below. Let's help each other out. <laughs> have a good one.